Hey guys, and welcome back. Today's video is gonna be a little different than the usual fix or finish project video. This one's intended to be more fun, kind of a thought exercise about rotational energy, rotational inertia. I had done a video last year on flywheels and we looked at three different flywheels and measured the actual inertia and how, how much force is required to make something spin. And we talked about the ice skater analogy when you know you spin around with your arms out wide, then you pull your arms in, you spin much quicker. And this is just like a physics experiment that we did on the flywheel. So I'm gonna continue that same exercise on the, one of the other most important part of your car are the wheels and tires. And so the question is, what's better, a 15, a 16, or 17 inch wheel? What happens when you go with a wider tire, wider wheel? Well, that can affect your acceleration of your car. I got all the way from a 356 tire to a 996 tire, which is a turbo twist nine inch wide. So that'll be fun. I just wanna say what's obvious is that wheel and tire selection is a very personal decision. So what you put on your car is totally uh, up to you. I'm not telling you what to put on your car. What I'm focusing on is not so much the benefits of tire selection, the cornering. I'm basically just looking at acceleration and what it takes to get your car accelerating quickly. I made a pretty crude test setup here on my bench. It's a little wobbly, it's a little thrown together, but I think we're gonna get some valuable data out of it. So this thing has very low friction. It's not going to impede the rotation of the wheel at all. So it's gonna be the same for every wheel, but I don't think this is a big factor. It spins really nice and free. And then on this side, I just have this uh, cylinder attached and it's attached with a string. So we wind the string up on this little axle here and then the weight just falls from the ceiling. And I'm using the stock aluminum wheel lug nuts. The weight is all the way to the top. I'm looking at the knot where it hits the pulley and then I'm putting this at 12 o'clock. So this is 15 inch wheel, test one. Each test is done three times, it's videoed, and I have some physics software that I can use to analyze the rotational speed right when the weight hits the ground. Sixteen inch wheel.
These tires are effectively the same height. These tires are 55 series and these tires are 60 series. So the smaller rim allows a taller tire, but the heights of them are almost the same. The Continental tire is just slightly higher, ever so slightly off. So what we'll do is we'll measure the circumference of these tires and find the, uh, the exact diameter of each one. But they're close enough for this test to compare them. Okay, this tape measures stretch pretty tight around the outer tread, and I get 77 and 5 sixteenths. That's on the 15 inch wheel. The 15 inch wheel and tire combo, 33.2 pounds. And this tire here weighs 34.8. Remember, both of these tires are 205s but this is a six inch rim and the other one is a seven inch rim. And both treads are in pretty much new condition. These have very low miles on them. This is kind of an all around kind of tire. And this one is a little bit more performance oriented. It's a low compound or soft compound, almost racing tire, summer tire. Circumference on this guy is Try not to get it inside that groove right there, but I get 78 and 5 16 So the circumference is almost a full inch bigger on the 16 inch wheel, 78 and 5 16 Okay, these are 17 inch wheels, 205 by 50 series tires, the exact same brand. These are the Continental Extreme Contact Sport 2.0, I think. So this will be a good test between the 16 and the 17s. Oh, it's spinning slow. Basically it's 79, yeah, 79. That's quite a bit bigger. I think the last ones were, um, I have to look, 77 and some change. So 45, nope, 44.8. Okay, this time it's my spare wheel from a 356. This is also a 15 inch wheel, but four and a half inches wide. The tire is a 165 R15. There's really no series on these vintage tires. This is about as tall as they get, probably like a 70 series or something. But let's spin this one and see how it compares. Steel versus alloy. It's almost exactly the same as the 17. Mm. 79 inches. 37.6. It's quite a bit lighter, even though it's steel, but it's just so narrow. This wheel is a 15 by seven, and it's also a 205 tire. So 205, 55, 15. So this should be another good comparison. Seventy-seven and five eighths. No, seventy-four and five eighths. The weight of the cookie cutter. Really light. Thirty-four point oh. 
255 40 17. So this is the rear tires from Todd's car and they are 17 by nine, 255 40 series, uh, 17 inch wheels. So let's see how the width affects the uh, spinning mass. <laughs> this one might get a little bit more torque because the string was doubled up, but not much. 78 and 3 sixteenths. 46.2. Here are the unprocessed results. This is just a side-by-side -side video of how long it takes for the weight to hit the ground. And then I crunched the numbers and I calculated the acceleration. The torque was fixed due to the weight. So I'm able to calculate the inertia and I put it here in a table. The bottom of the table is sorted with increasing amount of most moment of inertia. Basically the 356 wheel and the cookie cutter were a practically a, a dead even tie. And then <clears throat> as the diameter of the rim goes up, the inertia goes up. So here's the equation for inertia. It has to do with the mass and the radius from its center hub. So in the case of the wheel or the rim, it's, a, it's an alloy, which is a higher density than the actual tire. So typically the size of the rim has the biggest influence on the inertia. The diameter of the tire also is gonna play a role of inertia because it's the farthest from the hub, but rubber is not as heavy as aluminum. So a low profile tire is gonna have lower inertia than a high profile tire. But the main driver has to do with that big hoop around the, the rim. So a 16 inch rim is gonna have more inertia than a 15 inch rim. And that's kind of what the results show. We see it goes in perfect order, 15 inch, 16 inch, 17 inch. It doesn't really track the weight of the wheel tire combo. In some cases, a lighter wheel had heavier inertia. It has to do with the distribution of mass and how much that mass is away from the center axis. So I also calculated the amount of torque it takes to get your car going from zero to 60 uh, to spin all four tires. It takes about 38 foot pounds of torque to pick something that was in the middle of that chart. So 38 foot pounds compared to like the peak torque of this car here is probably around, you know, 200 foot pounds. You don't always make 200 foot pounds, um, especially at lower RPMs, but you also have the mechanical advantage of the gearbox, which is like a factor of like 12. So 12 to one mechanical advantage from a stoplight. So your engine, um, that torque gets multiplied. So you're, you're doing well over a thousand, almost 2000 foot pounds of torque. If you have all the torque available immediately from the engine, like if you just drop the clutch or something. So it is a factor. It does affect the acceleration. Um, you know, as you go up in the final drive ratios where it's like almost just four to one, um, that makes it harder for the engine to turn those higher inertia wheels but you also aren't accelerating as fast at those higher speeds. So yes, it does make a difference. If your engine is a, a monster and you're doing like, you know, fast cars today have like thousand horsepower, almost a thousand foot pounds of torque. In that case, the diameter of your wheels really doesn't matter. You have torque. But on cars like this, these older vintage cars, you know, they, they don't have unlimited torque and uh, especially the smaller displacement engines. That's where, this inertia of things matter. 
Um, I went and visited the Chalet brothers. They are the guys that were the first people to do a 10 second pass in a VW Bug. And one of the ways they were able to do that back in the 70s is they're able to reduce rotating mass. And number one, you want to reduce it on things that turn at engine speed, which like we talked about last year was the flywheel, the crankshaft, the connecting rods, the piston weight. They went through great lengths to reduce rotating mass within the engine. They drilled out the cam gears and the crank gears. I mean, it was completely lightened. The pistons were lightened a lot. So the wrist pins, everything was lightened and that allowed them to accelerate quicker. Those kind of things don't show up in a dyno, but it shows up in the drag strip. And so these guys knew how to handle rotating mass. The next most important thing is the tire and wheel combo, which, you know, when you have a small displacement engine, that kind of stuff does matter. So anyways, I hope you guys liked the video. I don't know how eye-opening that is. It's kind of intuitive, but it doesn't always track just the weight of the wheel. It has to do with the inertia. And most people don't talk about inertia, but that is what is at play here. Anyways, hope you guys liked it. See you guys next week. Cheers.